What is good friends, more World Cup action and I did miss a few I missed a few turns because my computer was lagging. Obi vs Alexander. Alexander playing for Team Italy, he brings some bulky offense with a Boswell, which is a cool team, but yeah of course. Obi brings stall, knocks off the Rotom's leftovers turn one. I mean I can understand why he's using stall because it's safe. Like it's a safe win sometimes. But it just gets boring because people keep bringing stall in World Cup. I think it's for the third or for the fourth time. I think it's for the fourth time that I've seen World Cup now. But yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure yet if he Scarf Tapu Lily or Scarf Garchomp. Scarf Garchomp makes more sense to me, but I think he went for rocks on turn 7. Oh, SD, okay. So he think, I think he Scarf Lily or Scarf Buzzwool. So he switches out the uh, um, Skarmory scouting for the Fire Fang. And Earthquake shouldn't do much to the Quagsire at all. He goes for Recover to scout for um, Z Tectonic Rage, which is a really good play on Obi's part. Spamming the Recover, because he might eventually go for the Z move, right? If he's Tectonic Rage, he might not have it. So I think this is just a Toxic Scald. Recover. An Earthquake Quagsire. Oh yeah, this team was used. The exact same team was used. I think it's an adapted stall team to the new meta game with Brave Bird on Skarmory. And Tangros is to help versus the... I think it was the Zygarde matchup. This team seems a bit weak to Manaphy to be honest, but no one uses Manaphy really. I mean if, if the Tangros is like more fist dev orientated and the Chansey can also get blown away by Manaphy in the rain if that tail goes up. I mean it can still be played around Manaphy because you have Dagi to revenge, you have Chansey to potentially check. But you have Tangros' Fist Devil dies to plus 3 Ice Beam and Manaphy's not used and the team can still check it a bit so that's not the biggest problem. But yeah, he's just spamming off quick here basically. And Obi finally shows Curse. He said I've clicked to recover enough, we're switching it up. He's gonna recover again here. Um, just be safe, that's how you play stall basically, not risk anything. Especially early in the game. So Axel Z move or Alex I said Axel, I mixed up with Axel 10. Alex Z move is gonna be um Yeah, I assume it's gonna be on the Scar Chomp. Cause we don't see live or we see Fire Fang. Oh we have seen Nasty Chomp quite a bit today, like quite often is what I meant to say. <laughs> Obi was just testing the water, genius. Um I think Obi is on US Metro. And they barely qualified versus India and they're doing pretty well at the moment. Which is funny to me because like they were almost they were almost not in World Cup but now they're doing pretty well. So yeah, this uh, Chansey is Heal Bell, uh, Softball, Stealth Rock, Seismic Toss. I don't remember if this Tangros had Leech Seed. World switches out on the obvious Sableye, he doesn't want to get will o -Wisp there. He has a sub Buzzwall that could potentially put in some work but like I said, the Skarmory has Brave Bird, so it's able to break the Substitute. Um, if it's Sub Focus Punch, how much would that do to Skarmory? I just want to run a cult. Can that break through Skarm? Uh, sub Focus Punch. That's 46 to 54, and on a ro turn at Scummy Roos, it will obviously do more. So we will see. It is substitute, okay? Is it leftovers? It's leftovers. So it's gonna be a focus punch. Um, Leech Live, and then either. Either Bulk Up, or Ice Punch, or Poison Jab in the last slot, or Earth Quick, or Thunder Punch. There's a lot of options in the last slot. But I think Sub Focus Punch and Leech Live is pretty much set in stone. I mean. I've seen Taunt bulk up, Mono attacking with only Leech Life, but you would never go for sub if you don't have Focus Punch. But yeah, as I said, this has Brave Bird. And this is gonna do like 50, yup. I remember when Buzzle was A+, plus, I never see Buzzle anymore. Probably new toy syndrome when it was used more. It's and uh, I think it's pretty good in UU. I haven't played much UU when um, after the tier changes. 
Yeah, but if Alex Lele is Joyce Scarf, it doesn't do much versus Obi's team. If he was um, Shetchel Modest Lele, that would put in some work. It wouldn't win, but it would put in some more work at least. If he plays it correct. The yeah, Bravefoot actually did a good chunk, what the fuck? So this Rolum is probably more spadef. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's not like this Rolum is going to be switching into any hard hitting moves because it's stall. It was, it was just a stall matchup. But I just want to figure out some general info. Like, I just want to know some spreads here and there. Not, nothing wrong with a little bit of calking here and there if the game is not too interesting, right? So Bravebird does 11 to 13% to this defensive Rotom. So let's say I make the Rotom cal calm and give it like 60 defense only. Bravebird can do a little bit more. And if I make it calm with no fist death, it can do 14 to 17, so it still can do 80%. So it's either a completely offensive Rotom, but um, I think it's like... Maybe 200 HP and the rest in speed death and some in fist death. Yeah, something like that. But not really sure. Hydro pumps. Hydro pumps. Um, because it will hit the crack side that could come out on a predicted volt switch. Would also two it KO the sable eye, I assume. And yeah, he does bring the pharaoh in on the lychee, which is a good play. So as soon as this lychee knock off. Um, hidden power ice and then either sleep powder or no no I think it has to have grass step I think it has quicker drain lead seed I'm not sure about the last move slots maybe it doesn't have knockoff because the team already has knockoff on Sableye so if it doesn't have knockoff I could see lead seed quicker drain sleep powder HP ice and knockoff <coughs> could also be slashed with sleep powder maybe but yeah Ferrothorn um, is not gonna go for hazards when there's a Sableye Tewolf is a cool play because if he goes into Sableye, he would have burned him. Uh, he would have T-waved himself, and then he couldn't have gotten burned, which is um, a actually a cool play. But if Scammer is going to attempt to roost up here, if Alex predicts the roost, he can get up a hazard. Because if he gets a full parrot, that would be nice. But Obi can potentially go into um, into Sableye, so that's a bit risky to go for hazards here. It's either roost for Obi or, or it's go Sableye. If you if you're confident that you would go for hazards here, you go Sableye. So I'm Alex. <clears throat> what would I do here? Either hope for the para and try to get up a hazard, but like I said, it's risky if the Sableye comes out. Does he have a double switch that covers the roost play and the Sableye play? Or a switch in general? Hmm. <laughs> it's kinda tough to say. If he goes Zygarde, he still has to predict. I don't know the set yet, I assume it's Bandit. But he still has to predict perfect with his Zygarde. And if the Tangers come in, and even if he predicts that with Toxic later on, if the Zygarde comes in, it's not the end of the world for Obi because he still has a chance he would heal well. <clears throat> and Tangers obviously has Regenerator. So Alex is thinking this through really hard. If he wants to double out predicting the Sableye or if he just wants to... Okay, goes Rotom, which is fine. I guess he's gonna Volt switch here. Because he already showed Hyro Pump, so I don't think Obi's gonna go on a Quagsire. He's either gonna go Changros or Chansey or Sableye. And you, do you don't go Sableye here because it's at 74. You don't want the Sableye to get too low. So yeah, it's either Chansey, Quag or Tang. And I think... Probably tank growth, yeah, exactly. So he goes for pens, but gets all of health back. That's one of the things that like Rotom has in the stall matchup. It's just annoying for stall, but it doesn't really beat stall. It's just really annoying. I think it's a crit that it shouldn't matter too much. I think it's just gonna go for, yeah, okay, get slash knockoff is what I was trying to say. But like I said, this might not even have knockoff. And this Feral Thorn. Could see Obi going into Skarmory, predicting a T-Wave. But he goes hard to Sableye. He goes for Power Whip, which is a nice play. Sableye is forced to recover here. So technically, um, he can stay in a Power Whip again, but it's like unnecessary then. Um, I can see Alexander having a chance with uh, Skarmory being paralyzed. Because he can set up a substitute. Oh, he's faster! That's actually huge. 
So if he gets the crit, if the Sableye gets to a certain range, he can actually beat this one-on-one -on -one with his Ferrothone. Zone. So I assume he doesn't have Gyro Ball, and he has like a neutral speed nature, maybe even some speed investment to make sure that he outspeeds Sableye, because it's a speed tie if he has neutral nature, yeah. So he probably is running some speed on this. Some Sableye also run 4 or 8 in speed, but I think maybe he runs 12 or 16. Um, <clears throat> not necessarily, he might also be he might just be running 4 or 8 pe um, EVs in speed. But yeah, I can see the qu um, not the quirk, so yeah. I can see the um, Buzzwall putting in work eventually. Um, if he gets up a sub and the Skarmory gets uh, paralyzed later in the game. So he will switch in the top of the Liberty and the Recover here. And Obi is gonna go... This is a tough turn for Obi depending on the Lily set, but he's gonna protect first to scout. So if this is Scarf, he has a free switch into Chansey. But if this is not sh not Scarf, then he Psyshox here and a Chansey comes in. It's gonna be bad for Obi. Because Psyshox should do it, KO the Chansey from 72. As he's just Scarf, I assume, because he showed that he was SD Chomp and his team is kinda slow. Still think his team is super weak to for Corona, so I don't really understand why he's Scarf Lele over Scarf Guard Chomp, but okay. Like, I've seen that a few times, I think three times this World Cup already. Um, that the Lightning Meter doesn't break the substitute, so this is huge for Alex. So he can go for uh, Focus Punch or Ice Punch, something like that. Like, if he predicts Sableye, he can go for Leech Left, but he did go for Focus Punch. And, ah, oh, we just went Sableye. If he predicted that Leech Left or Ice Punch. <laughs> I was thinking Ice Punch first as a mid ground play, because Ice Punch hits the Skarmory harder than Leech Life and also hits the Sableye. But yeah, he's just trying to freeze the Sableye. He gets multiple chances because. Um, he can just sub up again here. He's obviously gonna be faster than the Sableye. And Skarmory can get paralyzed, like this is not a good counter or answer. That's what I was talking about earlier. And he has Thunder Punch too, so he doesn't have Leech Life. He doesn't get a para here, but he's gonna get it eventually. And he also has a good amount of PP, like Thunder Punch has 24. Focus Punch has still 30 left, so it's not like that Obi is gonna be PP stored in this Buzzwall that easy. The set is kinda cool, especially with the TF support from the Pharaoh. Remember when Cliff Fable beat this, but we are special and use Tangros. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, dude, this this new version of Stall is actually kind of. Uh, did he go for Whirlwind there? Damn, this Gummy might actually go down. No, I think he just went for Brave Bird. Because um, I think Focus Punch has negative priority. That's why this Gummy went first. So he goes into the save by breaking the Focus Punch, which is a good play, but I don't think it matters because he can still fish for freezes. Wait, what are they talking about? Is this nigga retarded? What happened? Are they talking about the knockoff? But then he focus punch, which turn? I'm probably behind. Ice punch recover, protect. Ice punch, he gets the freeze finally. There we go. I don't know which turn they're talking about, but then he focus punch. Oh, that's already T punched, I think, yeah. I don't know, I don't think that was that bad. Um, but yeah, I want to see focus punch as narrative priority. I just want to make sure, right? Ah, nice. Bottle putting in the work. I can put Bottle in the thumbnail. I'm hyped. Yeah, there's a um, priority minus three, so yeah, that makes sense by the Skarmory. But we saw that the Skarm got paralyzed before this moved. And yeah, this game should be pretty over. I don't see how Obi can come back. Like, this is not really a mon that you see at all, and not with this specific set. Like, they usually w would see something like Leech Level over Ice Punch or over T-Punch. Or maybe Poison Jab to hit Clefable, and the Ice Punch is again, it does absolutely nothing. But... I don't think it's gonna be able to beat the Buzzwell at all, like... He doesn't have Rocky Helmet. I mean, Sludge Bomb breaks the first sub. Oh, it's Sludge Bomb. That's so specifically for Tapu Bulu. So it's Giga Rain, Sludge Bomb, Lichy. Does do my HP Ice? Because it has to have HP Ice, right? For Zygarde. Because Subtoxic Zygarde seems annoying to this team. Um... Where's the, where's the turn that I was wondering about? Oh yeah, I wanted to figure out if the substitute already took a knockoff from the Sableye or if the substitute was um, like basically fresh and un like new. 
So I want to know if um, the sludge bomb always breaks the sub or if it only broke the sub because of the because of the um, damage that Sable has knock off the 2D sub. If Sable did hit the knock the sub, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna call it because why not? I'm just gonna put s uh, the tangle set doesn't really matter because we're just gonna be calling was Boswell. Um, sludge bomb should uh, yeah 28 to 33 if the Boswell has 204 in HP. I don't think the Boswell is gonna be wearing more bulk. So I guess Obi still isn't out of this yet, but the Boswell really puts in some work. But figuring out, I guess, I guess after he figured out that this doesn't have leech life, maybe he should have gone to Tangrus first. But I mean, his Sable got frozen, so the Tangrus can also get frozen. Like it's not that Obi can do much about that. Like this could have also gone frozen. But the thing is, yeah, the, the difference is that Sable I gave this free substitutes, and this doesn't give it free substitutes. So that's definitely the difference. And. I mean, it's still it, it's still bad for Obi here because, yeah, Sludge Bomb would break the sub, but Sludge Bomb obviously won't kill. And if he if the Ice Punch gets a high roll, maybe it kills. Let's say Tangrus. I think this is a mixed defensive Tangrus. Um, Fist Death takes how much from Ice Punch? Fist Dave takes 82, 28 to 34 from Ice Punch. So this is a Fist of Tangrus. Um, it took a little bit more, so it's a little bit less Fist Dave than this spread that I was calking. But yeah, he makes a nice play into uh, Pharaoh's on breathing the Sludge Bomb. This is gonna get health back with Leftovers and Regenerator. So it can still check the Buzzwall later on a little bit, but it's not the best answer. Especially it always has to fear a freeze when it switches in and like if you like add that on and the game goes for a while You over and over have to fear and oh my lord the god goes for stealth rocks Predicting him not to go into the frozen sable eye because he wants to heal build the sable eye first So he gets rid of the freeze he gets rid of the um Of the para but now the buzzwell is in and the buzzwell gets a free substitute or focus punch And the ro the combination of this buzzwell being annoying to obi and rocks being up is really good for alex I mean, he still could have gone into Sableye, but it was really risky. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen PDC's game, check that out. That boy was wild with his Sableye, how he played it. You should see that game. Yeah. <laughs> During the end, like, or towards the end. Yeah, I think he doesn't lose anything from clicking Substitute. I mean, Obi is not... I mean, what does he, Obi even do? Can he afford to do anything? Uh, can he switch into Tangrowth here or does he just not have a play? This is tough, like... Sableye would get 2 it KO'd after rocks. So yeah, he goes into Tangrowth, I don't really see what else he could have done. And this, also this is smart from Alex part, because this has to keep wasting Sludge Bombs. I think Focus Punch also does more than Ice Punch, by the way. Yeah, that's 50. Oh my god. So it's in range from Ice Punch now. So I can see him going for Substitute here. Predicting Obi to switch. But this looks over. Like, I don't see how Obi can win. Like, it's kind of hard to prep for stall in my opinion. Because there's different stall teams. Like, a stall team that breaks the standard SPL stall team can... A team like that can be weak to a different stall team. Because, like, people like to change it up on their stall. But yeah, the stall team will get known, and I think um, I don't know if it will be that good for long. But yeah, this is a free substitute for Alex as the Quicksire came in. I love Focus Punch, that's so many PP. I just. I just don't see Buzzel being that good in a lot of matchups. But I've used. A, I, I've done a shot on live with this um, Buzzel. The specific set, but that was like a few months ago when, be when people were like toying around the new Pokemon, like, and it was still cool. Not not everyone knew yet which ones are like top tier, which ones are like not that good in the new matter. But like, Buzzwood's moves have all have a lot of PP, and I don't know if Scald even breaks the. Okay, so he's basically going for the curse up. So Focus Punch isn't going to do that much. Because unaware from this Quagsire would only affect this thing boosting its attacks up. But it doesn't affect the Quagsire boosting its defense. So this is going to be like 30 maybe. 
30 exactly call me the head calc master Whew. sometimes my head calcs are off but like sometimes they're like really good and it doesn't break the subs so if he just gets one crit this game is over so obi is playing with fire i mean he can't really do anything this is this is a threat like he's just gonna keep fishing for crits and if he gets like a lot of chances because he has like 24 pp left <coughs> I mean, I would at least fish for a crit like 10 more times. <coughs> I think a crit would do around 90%, right? He needs grass punch. <coughs> Good lord. Yeah, I thought this game would be a few minutes later, but thankfully I only missed a few turns. And the beginning was not really interesting that I missed. So he's gonna sub again. Um, the thing is, if this curse is up enough, he can't. He can't sub again. So yeah, <clears throat> goes on the Rotom. I probably would have recovered there, but he's also kind of careful because he only has eight recovers left. So the Rotom can go for Will Wisp. I don't know if Obi plays it, gets it correct. He can go Sableye here, but he did predict him to go into Sableye. Just clicked Hydro Pump, and that didn't do enough. I mean, he also has Heal by on his chance he left. He doesn't have to go hard Sableye. He just goes into Tangros. The thing is, Alex Alexander didn't win yet, but like he can be if he's patient, he can win this for sure. <clears throat> How much would have uh, plus two earthquake have done? He keeps going into this on the leech seat, and this not having knockoff is really helpful for Alex, because otherwise he would have already lost his leftovers on the Ferrothorn. And Ferro being T Rift can also be really helpful because they like can't really do that much to it if it gets t wave because it can't burn it, can only knock it off. But he probably would not go... Now that I look at it, maybe he doesn't want this to be t wave because he cannot beat the Death Sable if he's uh, not t wave But yeah, I want to call Boswell versus Quagsire. How much plus 3 Earthquake would have done if it always breaks the sub? Because <clears throat> if it doesn't, Obi could have tried to sub at least once more. And fish for crit a few times, but I can understand he wants to be like a bit careful how he plays his boss will not just waste all his PP. But if he gets the crit, I mean, it would have been over. Uh, Earthquake does 8, uh, no, Focus Punch does 22 to 26. No, no, I was about to calc. I wanted to calc Earthquake from Quagsire at plus 3 attack. I calc Quagsire's bulky side, but I should have calc the offensive side. So yeah, it has a chance to break the sub at plus 3. And I guess Alexander makes the correct play because he knew that at plus 4. If this gets more and more defense, that um, it will be able to break us up. <clears throat> okay, so what happened here? When the Skarmory Alex doubled out into Zygarde and predicts the Tangros here, because the Skarmory was smacked down, which means it would have died to the next thousand arrows, so it was forced out into the Tangros. <clears throat> As soon as it's like Z Inferno Overdrive. We don't know if this is HPIs yet. I think it should be HPIs. So I don't know if I would have gone to do this. <coughs> Obi's tank gonna be back at full after the next regenerator. I mean technically at full, it always takes 12 from Roxas before he can default. <coughs> yeah, Alex is gonna have to play this. Um, I mean, if Alex plays this well and can prevent Obi from defogging, he's in a really good spot. Cause like, it's not like Fer that Ferrothorn will set up rocks again very easily. Because Sableye is not frozen anymore, but... Yeah, Sableye is still in range from a 2 KO from Power Whip, so it's not like... <coughs> he still can get rid of rocks eventually, like, if, if the Sableye doesn't heal. But it would all kind of be a 50-50 if he goes Skarm, Sableye, or Tangros on the Pharaoh. So, yeah. I mean, that makes the game more interesting. <coughs> like, really specific place. Have to be made here, I feel, for Alex, and then you can win this convincingly, if that's the correct term. Yeah, and he goes back into Tangles on the HPI, so he's playing this well. So he's scouted out basically the entire moveset from the Tangles now. And he's, I think he can leech seed here. Because Obi's never gonna go hard, save like with Rocks up and. No, not only with Rocks up, but he's in 2k range from Power Whip, right? How much did Power Whip do? I think he was in 2k range, I think he did like 30. Yeah, did 35 one time even. <clears throat> I 
So leech seed or power rip. Like if you predict the Skarmory. I can also see doubling to Zygarde. Just to make the Skarmory take rocks damage. And if if you um mm, Yes, yeah, Vordum is a better play actually if predicting the Skarmory here. Because Skarmory would be able to live with Bandit Cells and Arrows, I think. I mean it would, would it would get really low. It would be able to get off the defog, but would it, it would be put down so low. <clears throat> but this is actually a better play because Rodom would not that the Skarmory defog. He Volt switches out, I assume, into Tapu Lele or Ferrothorn, predicting a Giga Drain here. Like, Ferrothorn obviously resists the Giga Drain better, <clears throat> but Tapu Lele has good spadef, so that's another option. Like, I don't think he would go for Sludge Bomb here because he has been going Ferrothorn before on this, right? Yeah, he goes in the Pharaoh zone because it's basically you can't touch the Pharaoh. And once this is kinda out of PP. I mean, he's not gonna really waste the Sludge Bombs, but if he would get rid of the Sludge Bomb PP, like if he would waste them, then Buzzle would get free subs on this. Zamrock in the chat, what was wrong with Giga Ing? The bench that always wrong Zamrock. <laughs> this boy that's probably just joking because I would not like being benched on US East is definitely not bad. Yeah, Zamrock I think Zamrock is on the bench from US East. Like it's hard to even get on that team. Um, what is Alex gonna do here? Cause he obviously don't wanna give the Skarmory the free defog. The thing is, even if the Skarmory defogs on the Feral Zone, you can go for rocks again on that turn. But it's just tough, cause if he goes into Sableye on a turn that you rocks, then rocks would be on both sides. So he goes for Giga Drain, predicting Alex to double switch as he just goes for T-Wave. So this might come into play later on with the scenario Boswell versus Tangrowth that Boswell can sub up because this gets paralyzed or Boswell can like get another hit off. But I mean we already saw that he had Seal Balloon on chance so he might get it off later. But he'll be around his 8pp. So did he double out? He T-waves again, okay. So he has to hope for a full para on the scum so that he doesn't get off the defog. I assume he's gonna go out into Rotom and Pain Split or into Tapu. Actually, he can go into Buzzle here. <clears throat> yeah, he can go into Buzzle here, I think. He goes into Guard Shop. Okay, so he's gonna SD, I assume. And if this gets paralyzed here, which it gets. And this has Inferno Overdrive. This is a bad position for OV. I mean, we know it has Firefang. Firefang can flinch and para, so even if it's not Inferno Overdrive, the Skarm is threatened out here. So I assume he's gonna go Quagsire. I can see Alexander going for Earthquake, predicting the Quagsire. Did he make the play? He just goes for Firefang. Disappointing. No burn. I can understand why he made that play. Oh, he pivoted out, and that's the Z move. Oh, devastating Drake. Goodbye. So he was scouting for the Z move earlier, but Alexander pulls out the Z move in an unexpected situation. I think he was just um, pivoting into Tangrowth on an expected earthquake. Maybe on his expected tectonic rage. So yeah. Uh, Leak said now Zyga looking like a real threat. I mean, Buzzwell also looking like a threat. I really think that um, Alex has this game, yeah. I mean, he, 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 could, he was able to keep rocks up because the Skarm got paralyzed. I think the Skarm went for defog on the para. And he's gonna Volt Switch here, not letting the anything come in. Or oh, Pain Split, that's fine. Pain Split weakens the Chen Z, forces the Chen Z to softball eventually. Um, so Chen Z can softball or heal bell here. Or get up the rocks for Obi. But yeah, this set is known, like the last move is... 
I think Stellar Frog. So that's why going Buzzword was a fine play. So he gets up to sub. And he gets his chances here to freeze the Sable. Like, here we go again. We had this scenario happen earlier. If he gets the freeze, the game is just over. <laughs> Ready for round two. <laughs> Saying he sacked the wrong mon. Maybe he sacked the wrong mon, but I think the way this has been going, it was just looking really good for Alex. Not that Obi didn't have a chance, but like those moves like T punch, Ice punch, and Focus punch. Like Ice punch and T punch both have after effects, they can freeze, they can para, and you're eventually gonna get crit if you're on the defensive or frozen or like something like that. I'm just saying, like, if Alex spams these moves, that's eventually Hex. Hex is gonna happen, yeah. <laughs> Why are Obi's nicknames so edgy? I would. P I, sm <laughs> I smell the freeze. <laughs> Yo, Asuya can control this shit. He also controlled Sorin's internet. I'm just kidding, by the way, don't hate me. Just kidding. <laughs> So yeah, he's gonna T punch I assume breaking the protect to not waste ice punch VP, but I guess he ice punched. Cause he only has nine ice punches left, which T punch only he already had sixteen. He can also focus punch because he still has twenty left. Did he focus punch? Focus punch on this on this specific turn was a lord play, but he didn't. Quicksay is gonna curse up I assume, so it just focus punches I guess fishing for crits. Or just making this, um, yeah, making this one out of recover is a fine, like, making this use recover is a fine play. Because it only has six recovers left, so I completely agree with this play, now that I look at it. Like, after, like, sometimes I don't realize the optimal play immediately. But this is completely fine. Spamming focus punch. And this will run out of recover in a few turns. I mean, he's probably gonna switch once this gets to plus three or plus four. But you know what to just say fuck it and stay in. <laughs> Last time I wanted him to stay in. And fish for the crit. He switches on the sailor on the focus punch, which was uh, I guess a nice play on Orbi's part, but I don't think he gains that much from doing it. Like it's not his fault, it's just really hard at this point to win. I don't know if your Obi was forced to bring stall. I know sometimes like the team captain or someone like decides what team. Oh, that's a freeze, but it has scald. Scald can saw, but the thing is, um, you can't. He cannot use recover on this turn because he's forced to use scald to saw. So yeah, GG. Back to Sableye, but this is gonna be forced to recover, and it's gonna get hex too eventually. So the Zygat is not Zygat. This puzzle is well trained. He got a freeze on the Sable earlier, and he went for heal ball, and he got the freeze on the Quagsire. Focus punch, predicting a protect slash a switch, okay. So yeah, this game is already 33 minutes, but it's not gonna be that long probably, I think it's gonna be over in the next... 8 minutes. Maybe 10 minutes. Kind of funny. That some of the games there were not stalled earlier. At least the one game with Snowy game was pretty long, even though it wasn't stalled. Record that with my boy Dennis. <laughs> so yeah, the Skarmory is <laughs> not really doing anything to the, the boss wall, but the para especially. Because if he roots, focus punch becomes super effective, right? So what is even the Skarmory's play here? Yeah. Brush <laughs> bonded chat people should never use stall. I mean I get why you use stall, especially in tournament play where you can see what your opponent opponent likes to use and like if they're specifically weak to stall, usually you can like just try to bring that. But sometimes that can also backfire because people that are weak to stall might just say, mm -hmm, I'm gonna bring this and this cool set that can deal with stall because I've been weak in the stall. I've been weak to stall in the past, so I'm gonna switch it up a bit. I mean, I would re obviously build off 
what my opponent has brought in the, in the in the past if I would play someone in a tour. But I would also bring something that I'm comfortable with and something that can at least have a chance to... Like that at least doesn't get 6 old by stall. Because you have always have to consider... You always have to consider the opportunity that your opponent can bring stall. But I mean, there are so many Pokemon in Sun and Moon and z moves are busted too. So like, there's always going to be that one set in the game that 6 old your team. Like, no team is perfect. Uh, building Sun and Moon is kind of hard, I feel. But Moon's like... Zygarde making you run Tangros a lot, or like leftovers protect Landris, which is eh, which is, I don't know, I don't, the set is cool, but it doesn't always, like it's not even my best Zygarde check to be honest. But yeah, back to the game we go. So, um, <laughs> he switched out into Sableye on the Focus Punch, because he obviously doesn't want to lose his Skarmory. And yeah, he's just gonna. Alex is gonna fish for Hex a few turns. Um, I assume he's gonna keep like five T punches and maybe two Ice punches. I don't think he's gonna waste them all. But the thing is, the Sableye is gonna run out of recover. He only has three recovers left. So yeah, this is. It's not. Yeah, this is looking pretty good for Alex. Never mind. I thought he still had like eight or nine recovers. He only has three. So like, once Sableye runs out of recover, he's either gonna have to sack it off. I'll have to sack the Skarmory and. Yeah, also like Leek said in the chat earlier, Bennett Zagat also threat, especially after the Tangros went down. And yeah, this is there's like multiple wounds for Alex to win this now. Um he did get a little bit of hacks earlier with the freeze and on the Sableye, which allowed him to like go for rocks, but he still played that fine. Like there was definitely the opportunity like a chance that Obi would have gone into Sableye, even if he was frozen on the Pharaoh. That was kinda of a risky play to go for rocks, but Definitely, um, well done by Alex. And like I said earlier, I think Obi is on US Metro and Alex is on Italy. So, Italy score? I'm not really sure about the score. But I think US Metro had a really good score, like... It, it was either 4-1 or 5-1 earlier. Like they didn't play many games, but they had like a really good start. Yeah, I don't remember if they played another game because there was like a f one Gen four and one Gen five game that I didn't really pay attention to. Because there are so many games these days going on, and people don't really watch black and white. If I upload that, I don't know if it's because I don't have black and white knowledge or if they don't black and white. I mean, Sun Moon is obviously gonna get more views than. And not only that, I don't only do it for the views, obviously. I obviously know more about Sun and Moon and Auras. I'm not saying I'm like an expert, but... I have definitely okay or decent knowledge in those tiers, and in, in Black White it's just more like meh. Which you guys probably, like, obviously know if you watch my videos. But I know that I get some new viewers every now and then. Oh, we just said GG. Because, yeah, he can't win. So he doesn't want to play this out. Cause like this, he would just sub again here. Sable would run out with recover, so it would get beat down, and everything that can switch in would lose to this too. Um, especially with Quexa being frozen, so yeah, he did get some hacks. But like I said earlier, hacks happens when you repeatedly attack, 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 and he has those moves with a lot of PP, so it's gonna happen eventually. And he was spamming those moves, and yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Um, the snowy game that I want to record too should be in 4 hours, not sure if any other games that will happen before that, but hope you all enjoyed, I mean it was a stall game, it was a stall game, but it was not really boring, like, it was kind of interesting and like it's refreshing to see Buzzwell and especially to, to see Buzzwell put in work is especially really cool, but yeah, I hope you all enjoy my World Cup coverage and goodbye friends.